When you tear your ACL, it is immediately obvious that something serious has happened inside the knee. Usually there is a pop or a snap in the knee, there usually is a very unstable feeling when trying to get up, and often there is also marked swelling of the knee developing in the first hours after the injury. The good thing is that, although the situation may seem very bad and helpless in the first days, the symptoms will rapidly get better. The swelling will subside, the pain gets markedly better, and the mobility restores. To a point that you may even believe that it doesn't seem all that bad. So in other words, you have some time to reflect and to consider, together with your doctor, the different options. Basically, you have two options. Surgery or no surgery, which we call conservative treatment. If you have a sports active lifestyle, surgery will be the standard. Because you need a good ACL and a stable knee for most sports. In some exceptional circumstances, however, surgery can be avoided and you may actually recover them faster and better without surgery. But the conditions where that may be the case are rare. For that to understand, I have to explain what the ACL actually does and how it can tear through different mechanisms, because that plays an important role in your decision making. In fact, your ACL has three functions. The first is that it protects your knee against what we call anterior tibial translation. You see that here. So it stabilizes the knee against forces that draw the lower leg forward to the upper leg. So the ACL may tear if this happens suddenly and excessively. But honestly, this occurs only rarely. In other words, this trauma mechanism is relatively uncommon. The second function of your ACL is to protect your knee against hyperextension. So sudden and forceful hyperextension may cause a tear. That happens already somewhat more frequently, but is still relatively uncommon. The good thing with this mechanism, however, is that it usually causes a tear with little gapping, where the torn fibers stay well aligned, which greatly enhances the potential for healing, even without surgery. I will come back to that in a moment. And the third, and by far the most important function, is that the ACL protects the knee against tibial rotation, like during a pivoting or twisting movement. For example, when the athlete suddenly changes direction while running, or during an uncontrolled landing from a jump. You just saw an example of that in the beginning of this video. And that is by far the most frequent mechanism by which people tear their ACL. Now, what is important is that for each of these functions, the ACL is helped by your muscles. They help in stabilizing the knee, especially for translation and hyperextension, but not so much for rotational stability. Indeed, for rotational stability, your muscles provide little help. So that means that if you are going to do a lot of rotational activities in the future, even in case you develop strong muscles, that will be very problematic and in fact dangerous if you don't have a good ACL. So what factors should you make decide? Well, if you are a young person, let's say under 45-50 years old, with a sports active lifestyle and regular pivoting or rotational stress on the knee, you are most often best helped with surgery. Certainly if on your MRI there is an associated unstable or loose meniscus or cartilage injury. And if on your MRI there is clear discontinuity and gapping of the tear, with both ends of the tear nowhere close to each other, and if your anterolateral ligament is also damaged, stretched or torn, I will come back to that in a moment, in that situation there is little discussion, you need surgery. If on the other hand you have a sedentary lifestyle, or you are engaged only in unidirectional, non-rotational sports activities, such as treadmill or inline running, cycling, swimming, or other non-pivoting sports, and in case that on your MRI there is still some continuity or alignment of the ACL fibers, and in case you are already somewhat older, which means that your knees are already somewhat stiffer, and therefore intrinsically somewhat more stable, then you are a candidate for conservative treatment and you have a chance to avoid surgery and still be reasonably stable and safe in the short and the long term. But of course, these are two obvious and very clear situations, whereas frequently there are intermediate conditions with pros and contras for each option, such as for example this 62-year-old lady with a full rupture of her ACL, but who still is an active skier and whose knee is very unstable rotationally. So here we did an ACL reconstruction, whereas here this is a 24-year-old Taekwondo athlete with an hyperextension tear of his ACL, with well-aligned fibers on MRI. He was treated without surgery, and once healed, he continued to perform excellently at the highest level, because this tear 
had indeed all the chances to heal perfectly without operation, in a period as short as only four months. And that brings us to the next point. If you go for non-surgical treatment and you fulfill the conditions for that, it is important to know that during the healing phase you need to avoid any stretch onto the healing ACL so that the tear does not get pulled open and that it can heal in the most optimal and solid way. That means that you should avoid terminal extension of the knee as well as deep flexion because it is then that the ACL comes under tension and gets stretched which will lead to loss of tension and inadequate healing of the tear. So during the healing of the ACL your knee should always stay out of the red zones and remain at all times in the green zone, which is somewhere between 30 and 100 degrees of flexion. For that purpose, you need to wear a brace that limits motion beyond the last 30 degrees of extension and that also limits deep flexion. Typically, a brace with a 30 degree extension block and a flexion block at 100 degrees is prescribed for that, which you need to wear continuously during the first six weeks, so day and night and also during physiotherapy. That will make sure that the healing of your ACL can occur without any undesired stretching on the scar tissue, since such stretching might jeopardize the final stability. After that period, intensive strengthening of your leg and thigh muscles is required to optimize your muscular stability. And of course, any rotational stress on the knee should be avoided, at least until adequate healing is achieved, which usually takes somewhere between 4 to 9 months. As a precaution for the long term, it is usually also advised to use your brace during activities that are associated with pivoting or twisting of the knee. If you go for surgery, there are a couple of things you need to know. First, reconstructing the ACL is a standard, because simply suturing the torn ACL is technically impossible in most cases. That is because when the ACL is torn, it is like a steel cable, with hundreds of tiny filaments that no way you can suture together in a solid way. So therefore, the ACL is reconstructed using a tendon graft, which during the healing will remodel into a new ACL. Which tendon graft and which fixation technique is exactly used is of less importance. Numerous studies have indeed shown that whether hamstring tendon grafts, quadricep tendon or patellar tendon grafts are used, that makes little difference to the end result. And also, which fixation option is used makes little or no difference. During the surgery, of course, any concomitant injury to the cartilage and menisci will be treated as necessary. Of importance here is also the anterolateral ligament. In case this is torn, stretched or damaged, like here, it is of extreme importance that this is fixed as well. Usually this is done by what we call a LET procedure, L-E-T, which stands for Lateral Extraarticular Tenodesis. The reason is that the anterolateral ligament is, in conjunction with the ACL, an important protector of rotational stability of the knee. So, if your ACL and ALL are both torn, you really need to have them both fixed, because they help each other in protecting the knee against rotational stress. In fact, if only the ACL is reconstructed and the torn ALL is left untreated, you have a 12-15% to re-rupture risk of your reconstructed ACL. Whereas, if also your ALL is reconstructed with a LED procedure, your ACL re-rupture risk drops to only 2-3%, which is an enormous improvement, of course. If you want to learn more about this, please have a look at this video. The good news is that after surgery under these conditions, your chances of getting back on the sports terrain and performing as good or even better as before are high, in our experience greater than 90%. But of course, that needs a good deal of physiotherapy and exercising after the operation which, by the way, is a different schedule of when you are not operated. But it is definitely very possible to come back stronger than before, if you are motivated and have a good team around you. So, with this, I have explained the four points that you really need to know when you have ruptured your ACL. 1. Take your time to fully assess the situation. No need to panic. You have reasonable chances to come back as good as or even better than before. 2. Consider carefully your two main options surgery or conservative, realizing what the ACL does and means for your knee. 3. If you go for conservative treatment, I have explained you the key points for success. 4. In case you go for surgery, which factors do count and which are of less importance. Thank you for watching.